Yeah. It's a rolling, not a stopwatch. So don't ever stop. Just don't ever stop. What's up? Back again. Back That's again. a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for the last three weeks, fans are like, When's the interview with Bob? When's the interview with Bob? Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's yeah it's been nonstop. Like, that's awesome. I think fans have gotten used to whenever you have an album coming. Yeah, that we're going to do this. We're going to do this. That's because so. I don't do a lot of like in-depth press, which is important. Yeah. Well, it means a lot to me that from, from day one, totally. uh, we, we've had this conversation. Yes. I was looking at your discography, and you've put out at least one project every year mm -hmm. since 2010. What keeps that fire in you to want to do that? Because I feel like if you look at a lot of artists' careers, there's usually like one, two, three years at some point in the career where they take a break and they kind of reassess things. But for you, it's been nonstop. Where does that feel come from? Um, I think in the beginning, it's like something that I had to do because it's, it's just about relevance and staying in the game and like grinding and working and getting up there. And I would say after my first album, I was like in hip hop. Like I was a hip hop artist. I was in hip hop. Um, you know, still on my grind, still on the come up, just like anyone, you can't get complacent. But I feel like after all those years of hard work, and I was finally like, okay, here's my stamp. But then when I had it, I was like, no, I'm going to work even harder to, to stay. And now it's kind of like muscle memory. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, somebody trying to shape their body. They go to the gym. It's like this difficult thing. And they got to do everything they can to, to get that body they want. And then when they get it, they're so used to it. It's easy for them. It's just about maintaining it. Um, so for me now, it's just about maintaining it. I love it. I love it. It's like breathing it's like a sixth sense like when i create music it's just easy but in a fun way it's not it's not that it is easy to do it it, it took forever to be able to get to a place where i could just walk in a studio with six and just just do it and just have uh, have fun and create quality music very quickly the young yeah. sinatra series is kind of like the diehards have been asking for for a long time in our last interview i even brought it up yeah. and you're like nah it's not ever coming back yeah but i already knew it was happening yeah, yeah. Then, it's yeah. just you wanted to keep it a secret for your fans but yeah what I, does it mean to at this point in your career come out with a, another young sinatra tape um i think it's dope because as a commercial now mainstream artist i feel very proud in knowing that like i'm dropping a boom bap hip-hop album there's not really too many people doing that but especially this way like very 90s not just like oh this is some dope hip-hop shit over some hip-hop drums but this is like a straight up boom bap album on this scale um it's it means it's just makes me really happy and i and i I've, i'm proud to do it after the success of 1-800 i think it could have been easy for you to put out a project with a bunch of radio smashes yeah but instead you put out you know, Bobby Tarantino. Yeah. And then now you're putting out the, the young Sinatra. Why is it important for you to do that instead of ride the wave of like, oh, I got radio hits. Oh, let me just put out a bunch of radio hits because that, um, that's what a lot of people would do. Yeah, but that I'm already a millionaire. <laughs> like, not to sound no type of way, but it's like, like I used to think that, oh, if I get a radio hit, it's going to make me millions of dollars. Like, yeah, 1 800 went five times platinum. And I made a lot of money, but I made way more money from signing, you know, long-term tour deals and merchandise deals and all this other stuff, which came from the connection of me and my fans because of real lyrics that they connect you to want to come see those live and, 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 you know, buy into the brand as a whole and the Rat Pack hole in the clothing. When I'm in the studio, I don't think radio. Like, I don't think, oh, this is a radio song. What I think is, oh, this is the party song. This is the song... Like, this is like a fun-ass vibe or a good vibe or a positive vibe. Like, there's a whole bunch of people, obviously, on Spotify and all this, you look at the numbers who love one day, and then there's some people who's like, this shit's too positive. Literally, there are comments out there who be like, this shit's too positive, it's too radio-like, whatever the fuck. And then you drop the return and everybody's like, oh, he's back. Oh, it's, uh, and it's just like, this is me. This is what I do. There, it's not, like, any real fan of mine knows, like, there are different levels of the music that I make. You know, it's just, it, it, it's just, that's what it is. Like, and if you don't like, if you love boom bap shit, we'll just shut the fuck up and enjoy this album. And you might not like my next album after this. You might not like the one after that, but you know, there's still always going to be real raps, real lyricism, real cadences, real flows. And it, but bro, I can't tell you how many people I meet that are like, yo, your Bobby Tarantino shit. That's the best shit you've ever done. Period. It's the best shit you've ever done. It's my favorite shit. Okay, cool. What am I supposed to fucking just make a bunch of Bobby Tarantinos for you? Meanwhile, you have a whole group of people over here who's like, no, 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 no. Incredible true story. When you do the space type shit and you're on that, that is the best. Like you have to do that forever or I'm not a fan anymore. <laughs> like it's like, okay. And then there's the other people's like, oh man, you know, when I saw you, play the piano in front of fucking sold out Madison Square Garden. That was incredible. I want you to do a whole album singing and do pianos and shit like that. And then people, it, it's just, 
it's not. It's like the, there's different sides of me, um, just like with the mixtapes. Because back in the day, on the mixtapes, people were like, you're trying to do too much. They're like, oh, you got this, you got this trap song, you got this song that sounds like Drake, then you got this that's like some Nas shit, then you got this, like, you pick one, bro, pick one. And I was like, no, I'm not going to pick one. Right. Only back then, I didn't have the platform that I do now, because I stood while other people were like, you got to pick one, can't do this, can't do that, can't do this, can't do that. I was like, nah, fuck that, I'm going to do it, whatever I want. And by doing that, I created Bobby Tarantino, I created Young Sinatra, I created, you know, these uh, different facets of myself on a project and when when i say young sinatra you know what you're going to get when i say bobby tarantino you know what you're going to get and it's funny because when it's just on some logic shit like you don't know what you're going to get in a good way uh, conceptually album wise who knows and you've been saying that since the mixtapes exactly like if you go back to the mixtapes and you listen to your songs you talk about wanting to do songs on the radio you talk about wanting to turn up you talk about all that stuff since day one so it's kind of funny that people now are like oh you got to stay in one lane it's like he's been saying that he loves all this shit yeah but that's not time. that's not a real fan like that's the tr the truth is like you can like my music, but a fan like st a fan is stands for fanatic someone who is like crazy for someone absolutely loves them like loves them somebody who absolutely loves me is gonna love every side of me it's like it, honestly it's like how, you know someone who loves their their children or their parents or you know um, their lover like you're gonna appreciate and love all sides of them and I'm you just can have favorites ones. i mean i have favorites yeah you know, who doesn't i, I, I got obviously favorites. love the, the boom bap shit because that's you know my lane but it's like i still appreciate and you know like all the other projects yeah but it's okay to have favorites but I, to I say agree. to say that you should only do one thing is not to take into effect that you're a human being with multiple emotions and that you're not here just to please one person and what exactly they taste but like. i think a real fan such as yourself could listen to any of the other projects and appreciate it as a whole and just appreciate it and be like, yo, this might not even necessarily be my favorite album, but yo, I think this is your most impactful album right. or your most message driven album. And you know, I really fuck with these three joints so hard. The, I, I, it's obvious I can fucking rap. It's obvious it's, everything is in tune. It's obvious that it sounds good. Right. But my favorite shit is like, for example, my favorite, one of my favorite songs off Everybody is Most Definitely, right. which is like the most boom bap dopest fucking shit to me ever. I haven't rapped on some shit like that to me since the older Young Sinatras in my vibe right. uh, you know but then to some people they could just overlook it right. and not really it's just funny man time but time will tell but at the same time everybody is my most critically acclaimed album and the most successful album that I've ever done so it just these are things that don't make sense. It's the same shit with like Drake. Like every time Drake drops an album, you know, you have a whole bunch of people that's like, oh, you know, the old Drake or the album before this or Kanye or whatever. But it's like, these motherfuckers still selling hella albums. Right. So why are you buying them? Why are you listening to it? Why are you this or that if you don't really love it or like it or want to be a part of it or, yeah, but it's okay to have favorites. Everybody does. I do. I have my favorite Kanye albums, Graduation. You know? Mine's College Dropout. Yeah, my favorite Drake album's probably Nothing Was The Same, and then I really love, if you're reading this. Drake ones are hard, because I feel like it's really a mood, like depending what mood yeah, you're right. on. It's but like, that's oh. another thing right there. What mood, like, wow, we're talking about an artist who can give us music for every mood there, that right. you could possibly be in. That's incredible. And people hate, so, but it don't matter. To me, the best way to hate is not talk about something. So it's like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, why yeah, if you're time? sane, yeah. if you're a human being, you, you know, you got walking YouTube comments. The reason why this album is so special and the people love it and what I've released and what they'll hear so much is because I made them wait for it. Because if I did boom, bap album after boom, bap album after boom, bap, boom, bap, boom, bap, boom, bap, it would just, it, it'd be the same shit. It's like if I did a million trap albums, right. you know, or if I did a million these albums or that albums or whatever, like you look at my discography and it's like a roller coaster, uh, like constantly going, you know, upward in a trajectory of, you know, creativity. It, and that's the thing I love about it so much. And that's why this album is so special. And that's why it was so fucking easy to make, you know, because I was like, oh, I just got to rap. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Other shit is like, I'm trying to test myself and play piano and sing and structurally like write things and create things and sonically and conceptual albums. And this shit was just like, oh, I just got to rap. All right, that's easy. That's what I do. Now I'm curious what the fans are going to say. It's like, oh, I want the whole logic back. I want the whole logic back. Now they get the boom bass. So I'm like, what's next? Yeah, but they'll probably say, like, I even seen a couple of things where it's like, oh, he's, he's referencing too hard. The original Young Sinatra's too much and the blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, eh, fuck him. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, all that matters is that I'm happy and I'm putting out good music and the fans are going to love it regardless. Like, that's what's so awesome about it. What I love about the album is that you do reference yeah. a lot of tracks. Like, when you hear, and, and we'll get into each yep. track by track, but yeah. 
Uh, just tell me a little bit about when you were going into this project. Do you sit down with Six? Do you talk about, hey, we want to have a bunch of like soulful samples in it? Or like, did you talk about kind of like a vision or is it like- No, we just say boom bap that? and it's known what that means. You know what I mean? So like, for example, like I do reference older mixtapes and projects, even bring certain like punchlines and things back intentionally. You should be like excited that you're a fan and you know that thing. You're it's like, a treasure hunt. Wow, exactly. Me. It's yeah. like, oh shit, this is Young Sinatra. This is undeniable. This yeah. is, you know, dear yeah. God. This is, you know, whatever the references are. So the first song you released for Young Sinatra 4 yeah. is One Day. Yes. Why was that the one that you wanted to put out first? Because uh, it's the most positive. You know, um, to me, that's like the quintessential Young Sinatra, like happy vibe, like dope, like, yeah, I've got those. There was a lot of fans who felt that vibe as well. Um, it's just super positive, and I talk about my come up, um, and then about overcoming and then making it, uh, and how others can do the same. So to me, it's just like, if there's anything that I want to represent the message in this album, um, it would definitely be that song, you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll be wiser, I'll make it, I'll do it, I'll get there. It's that simple. How did you and Ryan uh, tether link? It's really dope. I've never worked with a writer before, ever. Hmm. Um, like, never, ever, uh, really. I've had writers who were singers who kind of like fucked around with like vocals and harmonies and stuff, but never had anybody write a hook. And we just sat down and vibed, and I played him a bunch of the different albums that I had, and he really liked the more boom bap shit. And I was like, oh man, we should we should do something cool. We just wrote it. It was like super quick, and he came with the hook, and Six was there, and we all produced everything, and Kevin on the keys, and it was a good vibe. It, it was very it was very fast. It was to the point, and um, I'm not even kidding. It was like 20 minutes. That's yeah, great. we made the whole song in like 20 minutes. Now the song could fit a lot of different things, right? It's kind of. Uh like what we talk about Coldplay sometimes, it's like there's enough space in the words that a lot of people can apply to a lot of different situations. Yeah. Uh, for the music video, you actually applied it to, to immigration. Why yeah. was that important to you? It was just important because I think that all people deserve to be treated kindly and, and with respect and with love. And regardless of what like anybody could think, like, oh, Trump this and that and America, whatever the fuck, it was like, look, man, like... I have so many people in the Latin community in my life that I love and I see how this affects them, their families, like all this shit. And sure, there's people talking about it, but I was like, man, I'm going to do a music video about it and I'm going to really like drive it home. Um, and I think, you know, the statement is well, but the fucked up part is nobody wants to hear it. Well, I wouldn't say nobody wants to hear it. No, As I'm a talking about like, yeah, no. like, when you put that out, I was like, yeah, this speaks to... But it's a prime example of like the music industry. It's a prime example of like just what people want or like, you know what I mean? Kind of like want or don't want. And I'm glad I did it. I stood up and said, hey, you know, this is fucked up. And, th you know, this is what I think is, is going on. And I want to stand behind this and, and, and say something. And I think that's it's a message that can never be taken away that will inspire others, that has inspired me through all the hate. Like, I got so much shit, like, so many negative, terrible, hurtful comments. But it is what it is, man. We don't all have to agree. You can like apples, I can like oranges, I cannot like what you like, and we can live in harmony. And there's some people who just can't do that, and that's, that's okay. So um, it kind of all says it there, really, in the video. Obviously, I saw a lot of the comments that people put. One of the ones that was really frustrating that I saw a lot of was, Logic, I really love you rapping, but I don't need you to, to talk about politics or I don't need to- Yeah, shut to up and you. dribble. Shut, shut up, up and dribble, yeah. which is exactly what the, the Fox commentator also told LeBron. Yeah. What's your response to, uh, I, I don't even want to call them fans because I feel like if you're a fan, you appreciate- Even if you disagree full, with someone. Right. So you don't have to do it. The truth is, is if I, if I was on some Kanye shit, and I mean that very respectfully, if I was on some Kanye shit and I was wearing a fucking Make America Great Again hat and, you know, did a video that was like, support the fucking wall, then that person would not be telling me, don't talk about politics. They'd be like, yeah, because I'm talking, I'm supporting the politics they like. So it's, it's, it's just bullshit, like, you know, but for me, it, do, it really doesn't matter. Like it was, it, it's, it's. I don't really care what people are saying about me. It's more hurtful what they were saying, you know, like using using code words uh, for racism, like illegals, like get those illegals out of here. But it's like, we know what the fuck you mean when you say that shit. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just funny to me to be like, oh, I'm never listening to your music ever again. Like, you know, you, you lost me with this, you lost it, like it's over, blah, blah, blah. And then 
um, the return comes out and then those same people because I kind of kept, kept track just remembering certain things the mm -hmm. fucked up things that people would say mm -hmm. and then I would see and then they're posting my music and they're like this is incredible like you're back he's back now he's, he's, he's not on that polit political shit anymore mm -hmm. and I'm like bro it's been a week what the fuck are you talking about right. if somebody supports Trump okay and you can feel different anybody can feel different we all feel different about the shit if somebody who supports Trump you know like loves the same video games I like and the same kind of music, and the same kind of places to hang out, and vibes, and this, and all this other shit, but they support Trump, I will still be their friend. <laughs> I will still be your friend, and I will respectfully be like, yo, I just don't want to talk about Trump shit, dog. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that that person's a fucking racist. I, I, know, I know people, some of my best friend's parents, okay, who uh, voted for Trump, and I'm kind of like, how the fuck could you, a person of color, mm -hmm. How could they? Blah, blah. And they're like, yo, money, man. Like money, tax cuts, this, that. I'm taxed 55%, which is insane, okay? So it's like, if I made $30 million last year, bro, do you know how much money that is that goes to the government? Like that, it's, it's really insane. So it's almost in my favor, but I, I'm, not, I'm not with that shit. But to me, like, it, it's, it's almost like the whole Christian Muslim thing. It's like Allah, God, Jesus, whatever. It's crazy that somebody could want to, on both sides, kill the other person. You both have families. You both have, uh, you know, wives and daughters and sons. And you both like music. You both like sports. You both like all these things. But there's like, no, like you will want to murder the other person or be like, fuck them. Or not even let them into your life. Not even have conversations with that person because of their beliefs. That's just human. That's where we are. That's the world. That's the world we live in. So me... I don't necessarily judge others um, based on that. Now, if you fuck with Trump morally, I can't fuck with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You call other countries shitholes and talking about grabbing a woman by her pussy and all this other stuff. Like, I, that's fucking fucked up. Like, I just wouldn't fuck with you because you're not, because you're kind of a piece of shit. You know what I mean? So, and I also talked about Kanye. I said how I felt about Kanye and how I was like, what the fuck, Kanye? Like, you, you're not going to talk, you're not going to stand up and say nothing about what's going on in this country. And I got heat for that. People were like, oh, you talking shit about Kanye? I was like, no, I'm not, I wasn't talking about shit about Kanye. I was saying, man, you need to stand up. Then Kanye want to come out, you know, with the Make America Great Again hat and all this other shit. And then everybody's like, oh, yeah, fuck Kanye. Like, it's a cool thing. And then I'm on my Twitter talking about artists I love. And I'm like, man, I love Kanye. I love his music. And the people are like, yo, you wrong. for That ain't it, chief, or whatever the fuck. They're like, you talking you talk about you love Kanye, man? Fuck you, man. And I'm like, what? I'm like, last year, I, 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 it's not even that I called Kanye out. I was just like, all right, well, Kanye ain't saying shit. Like, like I watched when I was 15 years old and fucking Hurricane Katrina, and I was inspired by Ye. So you know what? I'm going to be the one to say it. I don't fuck with what's going on in the world. And then people want to, like, trip on me, like, oh, how dare you say that about him? Then he wants to come out and, you know, support Trump. And then everybody wants to shit on Kanye. And then I show Kanye love because no matter how I feel about him, I still think he's a fucking genius musically. He's amazing. And I will continue to shout him out, you know, as far as music goes. And uh, then I'm hated for loving him. It's fucking weird, man. It's like really weird. I think it's a complex situation when you get into it on Twitter. It's hard to like elaborate what you just elaborate on. It's like, oh, when I say I like Kanye, what I really mean to say is his music has inspired me to do this. But... I don't necessarily agree with this. Yeah, but you can't. Views. It's either one or the other. To in today, right. it's either you fuck with him or you right. don't. It's like to say you fuck with his music means you fuck with his political views. Means you, and it's just like that's not true, man. I'll do a podcast when I'm older and just don't give a fuck anymore. Like truly, when I'm in like my like 40s, 50s, and I'm good, I still got a lot of life to live, a lot of shit going on, and things to do. I'm gonna have a podcast, talk show, something, and I'm gonna say the most reckless, wild shit. But I'm gonna say it in a way that can be uh, argued and. And whatever, but in a in a peaceful way, you know what I mean? Like the fact that I say I don't fuck with Trump. There's a million kids right now in this shit. Like, well, Trump and blah, blah, blah. and it's just like, damn, it's crazy that I can't just say I don't like Trump. Like, fuck. Like, but the, imagine the other shit that I want to say. I'm seeing it in sports the most right now. Where it's for a long time, people kind of took the the Michael Jordan approach, which was, hey. Republicans buy shoes, Democrats buy shoes. I'm not going to say anything to offend either. I'm just going to kind of keep it, you know, a certain way. And now. I'm happy that our athletes like LeBron or Curry or whoever it is are like, hey, I play basketball, but I also love movies and I also have opinion on politics and I also like music and yeah. I'm a whole human being who has a right to talk about any of these things. Yeah, but different times, you know what I mean? For example, like the headlines for the one day video where Logic lashes back at Trump for, and it's like, no, I, I didn't do any of that. 
and, and for me, it's not, it's less about immigration. It's just more about humanity. Like really, it's like I just what I did. Logic talks about what's going on in, uh, regarding immigration, or you know, logic discusses what's going on uh, in humanity today. Like, but clickbait and all this other shit. So if I if I talked more freely and said the shit I really felt deep down, like really fucking felt, and I didn't. PC politically correctly say it the exact way I'd be ripped and t- torn apart that's why I don't do interviews because people take the context away on purpose they do it on purpose bro there, there's a publication and I won't say who it is because I don't want to give them fucking credit <laughs> you know who it is there's a publication that I've blocked on my social media because all they would do is post bullshit about me and they would take like I did a, I did a Rolling Stone interview where I said I'm arguably arguably the biggest musical artist like in hip hop to make it out uh, of my where I'm from, and obviously we know Wale is a huge staple where I'm from. And I went on to show love to him and Phil Ide and um, uh, you know Chaz, all all these different people from where I'm from. Right. And then this source doesn't even do their own. It wasn't an interview with them. They took somebody else's interview, posted on their shit, and the headline was Logic says he's bigger than Wale. Wow. And then I on Twitter was like, hey, like, I didn't say that. That's not what I said. I was like, and I never hit up publications or so that. I was like, I never said this. Like, why? And I literally remember using an F bomb somewhere. I was like, why in the fuck would you say this? Blah, blah, blah. They uh, retweet me, quote the tweet at Wale and go, oh, like, basically trying to insinuate beef between me and Wale live in real time, and they're joking and laughing about it. And I was like, that's, that's super crazy. Why would you talk shit as a publication? I remember uh, Noisy and Vice said some shit about me. Um, and it wasn't really, so it's not really them, right? But I mean, I don't, I will never really fuck with them now. Because whoever was holding on to their accounts was like making fun of my race, clowning me on Twitter. Back and, to each back and forth, yeah. Um, and it's obviously, you know, two different people must know each other and they're, and they're joking around. And uh, I heard about it, I didn't even see it. Um, but they, my boys had told me, that they were just making fun of me. And I love Noisy and Vice. Like, I, I think, like, I love their, their their videos. I think they're pretty cool and whatever the case may be. And I've, I've, I've learned a lot from them. But now it's like if they ever wanted to fuck with me, I would never do it. And it's not out of spite. It's out of respect. Well, how could you be so incompetent that you would allow someone access to run your Twitter account who is going to talk shit about someone? So... Uh, I just think it's weird. I think it's odd. I don't think it's reporting news. I think it's taking a personal stance and letting that person represent your entire company. But I think most news outlets these days aren't even trying to report news. They're trying to make news. They're trying to create their own headline so they can own it by being like, oh, we're going to instigate this so that then we could be the first ones to talk about this. It's like, it's become such a weird cycle. It's like, it's not even about reporting things that happen anymore. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the return and, and what that song means to you.